Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. Moving on to the next section, we're now going to talk about solving quadratic equations. And in this particular video, I wanted to do an overview of what that means and the different methods we're going to be covering. We're actually going to do it over a couple of sections. And to start off, I want to do just a quick review of what an equation is. So let's forget about quadratic equations. Let's just focus on the word equation. Now we've solved equations before, more so linear equations. So if we have something like 3x plus 1 is equal to 7, for example. This is an equation over here because there's this equal sign that we're working with. And so when we're solving an equation, what we're really solving for is an x value or whatever variable you're working with that's going to make both the left side and the right side equal. And so if we solve this equation here, we bring the 1 over, then we'll have 7 minus 1. Remember the signs change, so that will give us 6. Then we divide both sides by 3 we get an x value of 2. So that's the solution to this equation. An x value of 2 is going to make the left side and the right side equal. And you could see that if we plug in 2 over here, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 gives us 7. 7 is equal to 7. So that's what we mean when we're solving any kinds of equations, whether they're linear equations like this, quadratic equations, when you get to higher grade trigonometric equations, there's always going to be this equal sign and you're going to be solving for the variable that makes the left side equal to the right side. And so when we're talking about quadratic equations, what we're going to be doing is solving for x values where the equation is going to be set up like this. So instead of having a linear uh, relation like we had before, we're going to have a quadratic relation like this equal to zero. And we're going to have to solve for those x values. And there's actually going to be different methods to do this. So the first method, which is actually what we're first going to focus on, is the method of factoring. So with factoring, as you guessed it, what we do is we take this quadratic, notice that it's in standard form over here, and then we factor it. And we know that a factored quadratic, it is in this kind of format over here. Okay, and whenever you have this, we've gone through videos where an equation was already in this format when we were finding like x-intercepts for a quadratic, but we weren't necessarily going from here to here. We weren't doing the factoring process. And if you remember, if you have it in this format, what's nice is basically the values that are going to the x values that are going to make the left side equal to the right side. Well, notice the right side is zero. That's going to happen either when this bracket is equal to zero or this bracket is equal to zero. And so it's going to happen at an x value of m or an x value of n like that. So those are going to be the solutions. So let's do an example. So for example, if I have something like, let's say x squared uh, minus 4x minus 5 is equal to zero. Well, what we can do is we could factor this right here. And hopefully at this point, you're fairly comfortable in factoring, right? So this quadratic, this quadratic, they're the same. And so from here, we could tell when is this bracket, because if this bracket is zero, then it zero times the value is going to make the whole thing zero, which is going to make the left side zero and the right side zero. It's going to make the left side equal to the right side. So this is going to happen. Let's actually write this out as x minus 5 equals 0, or this bracket could be 0 as well. So it's going to happen at an x value of 5 or an x value of negative 1. So those are going to be the two solutions right there. And you could check these because notice if we plug in, for example, an x value of 5 up here, notice that the left side would be 5 squared minus 4 times 5 minus 5 is equal to 0. This would be 25 minus 20 minus 5 and then notice here the left side that's going to be 0 and we get the left side equaling the right side 
And then what about if we work with this negative 1? If we plug in negative 1 for all the x values, we'd have negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 minus 5 is equal to 0. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. We got minus 5 is equal to 0 like that. And then notice we get 5 minus 5. We end up with that same left side equaling the right side. So there's two solutions like that. Another thing I want to mention, again, we're going to run into a bunch of examples over the next couple of sections, but a lot of times the equation won't be given in this kind of format. Sometimes it could be rearranged. So if we take this, for example, sometimes maybe you'll get something like x squared is equal to 4x plus 5. The equation will be given like that. And what you want to do in this particular case is bring everything to one side. You want to get it in this format where you have a quadratic equaling 0. So over here, what we could do is we could bring all of these values to the left side and we're left with x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. And now it's in this format and now we can go into factoring, solving for those x values. So sometimes there's going to be some preliminary algebra in order to get it in this format. Sometimes it will be given in this format. So it really depends on the question. Now, as you'll see, a very important method of solving quadratic equations is one where factoring isn't necessarily going to work. And there's actually two more methods. The third method is not so commonly used, but I'll still go over it in this video just in case your teacher mentions it. But the second method, if you can't solve a quadratic equation with factoring like this, and as we know, not all quadratics do factor, then the second method that we'll cover in its own section is with something called a quadratic formula. Right, and a quadratic formula you can use for any quadratic. So you could plug even this into the formula and it would give you these values here. Again, we're gonna cover the actual formula in a separate video, but just wanna give you an overview of what we're gonna be running into. And so, for example, let's say we have a quadratic like x squared minus 10x minus one, a quadratic equation like that. Well, notice that this doesn't factor this quadratic here. There are no two values that are going to multiply to negative one and add up to negative 10, right? So we can't do that decomposition process. So this actually doesn't factor, but this quadratic does actually have solutions. So if you take this and you plug it into like an online calculator, this will actually give you solutions. The two solutions are going to be 10.09901 or negative 0.09901, like that. If you take both of these solutions, and I think there's even more decimal places, I just rounded it to five decimal places, but if you take both of these and you plug it in here, you're going to get zero for the left side or something very close to zero. So the quadratic formula, the way it's going to work, it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to allow us to get these sort of more exact solutions where we're going to have all these decimal places that we can't really get with factoring. Okay, but again, I'm going to introduce that formula in a future section. In the next upcoming section, we're going to be focusing on solving quadratic equations with factoring. But again, just giving you an overview so you can see from a higher level where we're going to be going. Now, a third method, this is a less commonly used method, but technically you can actually solve um, these kinds of quadratics without a formula right now with the tools that you have right now because we already went over in the previous section the method of completing the square and you can use that method to solve these kinds of quadratic equations that won't solve with factoring so the third method again but it's not too commonly used but it is a method 
nevertheless, that you can use on any quadratic. You can use the method of completing the square. So technically, you actually don't even need method two at this point, but it is um, a popular thing that is covered in the curriculum. So we're still gonna go over it, but as I mentioned, technically you don't need it. And so let me show you how this method would work. What you basically wanna do is you wanna take a quadratic that's in standard form, so like this quadratic or this quadratic, and you want to first convert it to vertex form. And we do that with completing the square. So let me show you with this quadratic how it would look. Let me write the solutions first here on the side to see if we actually get these solutions using this method. So we would take that x squared minus 4x minus 5, we would complete the square on and change it to vertex form. So what we would do, we don't have to factor anything else. So we would take half of negative four, which would be negative two, square it, that would give us uh, positive four. So we'd have positive four minus four minus five. Okay, I'm just working with this left side here, converting it to vertex form. When I'm doing this, I'm assuming that you've gone through the previous section and that by this point, you're fairly comfortable with completing the square. So I'm just taking this quadratic here, completing the square on it. These three are gonna factor into x minus two squared. And then we're gonna end up with minus four minus five. So that'll be minus nine. And that's still equaling zero. So what I did, all I did was I took this standard form quadratic, converted it to vertex form. This quadratic, this quadratic, they're the exact same thing. But now what's nice is I can take this and solve for x fairly easily. So let me actually put this under the completing the square method. So I'm going to write this over here, just so you see clearly what happens. And so you're not getting confused on your paper, you could just write um, this quadratic equation and this next line under this section over here. This quadratic equation and this quadratic equation, again, they're the same thing because we still have zero on the right side and then this quadratic, this quadratic are the same. So with this third method, you take a standard form, convert it to vertex form. And now because it's in this kind of format, you can actually solve for this X value. So the way we can do that is we bring the negative nine over. So we'd have X minus two squared is equal to positive nine like that. And then how do we get rid of this exponent two? Well, we would square root both sides. And so square rooting something to the power two, the square root and the two cancel out. And so we're just left with x minus two. We actually don't even need to write the brackets here. Now what's the square root of nine? Remember the square root of a positive number is plus and minus a number. And so that's where those two solutions are gonna come in. So over here, we would end up with plus or minus three like that. And so we have two different cases, either x minus two can equal positive three or x minus two can equal negative three. And what happens when we isolate for x, we get an x value of five over here, bringing the negative two over. Over here, we get an x value of negative one. Notice the exact same uh, solutions that we got when we factored it. Okay, so again, it is a potential method, but not a commonly used method. Uh, some teachers go over, some teachers don't. It's more so cumbersome because you gotta go from standard form to vertex form. You gotta do that completing the square process first, and then you can do this algebra over here. Okay, but again, as I mentioned, it's technically this method can be used on any quadratic. So what if we try it on this quadratic over here? Well, what we would first have to do is take this quadratic that's in standard form on the left side, convert it to vertex form. And when you convert it to vertex form, what you would end up with, I'm not gonna go through the actual process. You can do that. Just confirm that this is what you're getting. Uh, you would end up with minus 26 over here. Okay, so this quadratic on the left side, this quadratic over here, 
they're the exact same thing. If you were to graph both of those on Desmos, you would get the exact same graph, right? I just took this, completed the square, and now it's in this format. And now that it's in that vertex form, you can solve for these two x values without any kind of formula. You're still going to get those decimals because what's going to happen is the negative 26 we're going to bring over. And so that would give us positive 26. What do we do at this point? Square root both sides and we'd end up with x minus 5 by itself. Now the square root of 26, when you do that in your calculator, you'd end up getting plus or minus approximately 5.09901, like that. And so there are two cases here, either x minus 5 equals positive 5.09901, or x minus 5 is equal to um, negative 5.09901. Just running out of room there. Right? Two cases, just like we did before with this quadratic where it was plus or minus 3. Now we got plus or minus this decimal value. And so notice that when we isolate for the x over here, we'd end up with 10.09901. And then over here, when we bring the negative 5 over, we'd end up with negative 0 0.09901, like that. Exact same solutions that we got here. And notice there was no extra tool that we had to use. We didn't have to introduce some kind of formula, which we're going to introduce. We were able to just use all of the tools that we've gone through so far. More specifically, the tool of completing the square. Right, so with this third method, you can technically solve any quadratic equation right now with all of the tools you have. But again, as I mentioned, the quadratic formula is a more popular method. You're definitely going to be going through it. And so we will be covering it in a separate video, a separate section on its own. Right, so those are the three different methods to solve quadratic equations. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to be focusing on this first method.